Not everybody is, is gifted or blessed with an athletic ability. One of the questions I'm asked most often is, how do I become a better player? How do I, you know, how did you get so good? And my answer always is practice, and, and practice a lot. I never remember a time where I wasn't always the most competitive person on the court or on the playing field or in the backyard even. Um, it's, it's something I think, you know, maybe came from my dad. Uh, you know, I heard a lot of stories when he was younger. He used to play sports all the time and he'd always, you know, always be getting hurt. He'd have to get stitches. He'd have to go to the hospital. But, I mean, never did it stop him from playing and, and playing hard. And I think that's, that's something that I inherited from him because when I was younger and, and played in the backyard with him and my brothers, um, you know, I always wanted to win and, and there was no such thing as, as being injured to me. Jennifer wanted to win. Uh, we had neighbors, had a lot of kids, so we always played ball in the backyard. And uh, I always tried to throw that ball to her a little further away from her. And to Tommy, I always tried to hit him right in the chest where the hands were. She made every diving effort she could. She was tough, and uh, she wanted to win. And I mean, that's all I can say. I mean, when she lost, she'd go inside and she cried. I mean, she was great. She was a competitor from the day, I, from the day she was born. I think she's always been determined. Probably almost the same thing Tom would say. She had to be the best at everything she did. Dancing school, she was really good because she wanted to be good. Playing the piano, she was really good because she wanted to be good. She didn't mind practicing because she knew it would make her better. So she always had that determination. Jennifer Rosati was born May 15, 1974, and spent her formative years in the small New England town of New Fairfield, Connecticut, almost right out of a Norman Rockwell painting. It was here she began the remarkable story of determination and dedication that would eventually capture the attention of the entire nation. If you wanted to sum up what Jen Rosati believes about sports and about life, you could say it's desire. The intense desire to be the best you can be at whatever it is you choose. Always giving 100%. The one word I've always used to describe Jen on the court, off the court, is intense. Um, she has a fire burning in her that I see in very, very, very few people. She'll never give up. She'll never stop playing hard. You know, even in easiest cases, she'll be playing you know, her, whole, her whole heart out. So that's in anything that has to be done, she's intense. Basketball was the arena where Jennifer Rosati gained national attention for her abilities. But to get where she is today started long before she ever set foot on a basketball court. In this video, we're going to give you some insights into her amazing career 
and some solid ball handling fundamentals you can use on the basketball court. But this is more than just a how to do it basketball video. This is a how to become it video that focuses not only on the fundamental points of basketball, but also on a way to build your confidence and self-esteem from playing the game. To learn what Jen Rosati learned, that practice makes perfect. The only way you're going to get better is practice, but the only way that you should practice is 100% all the time. The thing about Jennifer is she grew. She's a very coachable kid. She listens. She listens to her father. She listens to her coach. Her accomplishments are well documented in the record books. After three years on the new Fairfield High School team and two state championships, she posted records in that school that will stand for a long time. Her jersey is displayed today at the new Fairfield gym, a symbol of what it means to choose a goal and then never quit until you achieve it. Her determination and skill during high school didn't go unnoticed. It might have been her sophomore year uh, in the state championship game at Central Connecticut State University. And I had not seen her up to that point, but I heard, obviously, that, uh, that she was a terrific player. And it, it was, uh, to say the least, a, a real pleasant experience that first time out. Well, there were parts of her game, I think, that stand out immediately. Uh, but until you've been around her for an extended period of time, and until you've had a chance to watch her closely, you really don't get a, a sense of everything that she does. Her career in high school was indeed impressive. 1991-92 Gatorade Circle of Champions, Connecticut State Player of the Year, averaging 23.7 points per game, and a three-year basketball and volleyball All-State standout. She always has been above average in ability, but I think going to a higher level has come from her desire. She's always had a, like a natural athletic ability, but a lot of people have natural athletic abilities. She has worked really hard to be where she is. Um, both, you know, athletically, she's always worked hard in practice, never slacked off, you know, even, even on a supposedly easy day, she'll push herself to the max. I think I've always been a, a self-motivated person. Um, I set goals for myself, and I just work as hard as I can to achieve them. And I'm an emotional person, and I think that carries over onto the court. Um, I don't think you'll ever see me in a game, you know, not smile or yell at myself. That's just how I play, and that's how I get myself into the game. Jen Rosati proved that she had come full circle. Her four years at the University of Connecticut were more impressive than anyone had believed possible. She was the standout point guard of women's basketball in the nation. Right side, Jen Rosati. Rosati drives inside and scores! She is by far one of the most intense individuals, and I, and I think what separates Jen is that that intensity goes throughout her life. It doesn't matter whether it's academics, whether it's basketball, but I had the luxury of watching her every day at practice, and that was the way she played every play of every practice for every minute, for every day that we've ever had practice here. She was one of the country's top Division I players and an All-American for the second consecutive year. A member of the Kodak First Team All-America, the Associated Press and UPI All-America team, the NCAA East Regional Most Outstanding Player, the USA Basketball Writers Association All-America team, and the GTE National Academic All-America team. She scored 1,540 points in her career, 207 three-pointers, 349 steals, and 637 assists. But perhaps even more impressive than her skills and statistics on the court were her accomplishments in the classroom. She was on the Dean's List with a 3.456 grade point average in biology at the University of Connecticut and was named the Scholar Athlete of the Year. 
know, I was brought up to um, always set my priorities straight and academics was first and that's something that my parents taught me at a very young age. Um, you know, I always believe in, in giving 100% in everything that I do and, and that doesn't, you know, include only sports, it includes academics as well. When she talks to kids, the first thing out of her mouth is academics first. You study and be the best you can be academically because there's nothing else out there. Yes? If you were to quit basketball, do you have a career that you could fall back on? Of course. And when I was growing up, my parents taught me that ed education comes first and your academics come first. And when I was younger, they didn't have a professional women's basketball league in the U.S. So I thought that when I was done with college, that I was going to be done playing basketball. So I knew that I had to do well in school because when I was done playing basketball, and I had a college education, I wanted to be a good one, and I wanted to do well so that when I got out of college, you know, I could get a job or go back to school and get another degree. Definitely, she's a, one of the toughest cookies I've ever met. Um, she's, a, she's a great friend. I mean, she's there. A lot of people see her on the court and they see how tough she is, but, I mean, she's probably one of the most sensitive people I've ever seen. team award for me because of my teammates they're just phenomenal but one person especially who I don't think is as much credit as she should but I really want to share this with her and if I could split it in half I'd give her half of it she's very emotional she she knows what she wants and she goes after it whether it's in the classroom or on the court I'm just happy to know that you know she's touched my life and I've been able to touch hers and and she's a friend that I'll never forget Jennifer is uh, equally committed to her schoolwork as she is to basketball. And to her, getting straight A's is equivalent to winning the national championship. And being on the dean's list is just as important to her as being first team All-American. A friend and competitor that people never forget is an apt description of the kind of loyalty Jennifer engenders. The fundamentals of ball handling and basketball, like any game, are the basis for excellence in the sport. We will be focusing on that during the second part of this video. To master these ball handling fundamentals requires three things, knowledge, skill, and practice. Practicing is the only, only way that you're going to get better. Um, you can't expect to, to improve your game just by getting older or smarter. Um, you know, it, it takes the hours on the court, um, not only practicing shooting, but getting yourself in shape so that you can get stronger and you can become a better player. When kids ask me, you know, how did, how did you get as good as you did, I, I tell them, I said I practiced and, and practice a lot. The fundamentals of ball handling that we'll be covering in this video will involve warm-ups, hand coordination exercises, ball control, and footwork. Hustle and desire are the key elements to Jennifer Rosati's success, something she has displayed over and over again on the court and in the classroom. They're what earned her All-American status from the University of Connecticut, and these are what marks her play in the Professional American Basketball League. But there's one more thing to remember, something that's as important as all the other skills combined. I think having fun is up there um, near the top, and uh, always being competitive and, and loving to play the game. I think when you don't have fun and you're not loving it anymore, then that's the time that you should stop playing um, or do something different. Um, you know, I think when I was younger, winning was probably something that I would say is most important to me. And it still is very important because, um, you know, for me to be happy, I want to be successful. Um, but I think to be successful, you have to give it 100% and to work hard and put in that extra effort. And if that's not fun for you and the rewards aren't there, then, you know, it's not something that you should be doing. 
This video will teach you the fundamentals of the game of basketball. Having fun is a part of doing your best all the time. And that comes from your desire. Remember, how well you learn these fundamentals from Jennifer depends on how well you apply yourself. We're going to concentrate in the second half of the video in showing you what you need to know and practice. But remember, it isn't things that make you a better player. It's you and your attitude that make you a better player. You have to ask yourself the question, what does desire mean to you? And to me, it means there's no limitations on the effort that you put forth to achieve what, what, you're, what you want. And that means that you, know, you have to, to sweat it out and you have to get there on the court you know, day in, day out, and practice and practice and become better. And, and that's the only way you can get better is repetitions and, and practicing the things that you're not so good at and practicing them hard all the time. I, I think the intangible question, at, at least in our perspective and in our program, is more, far more important than the actual ability. And I'm not sure that young players even understand that. Many times when I go to see someone play, I've, I've already established that they have the physical capabilities, but I often watch uh, how they interact with their teammates, how they handle adversity with an official, how they handle the competition when it can get you know, pretty down and dirty if they're playing. Um, all sorts of intangibles. How hard do they play? You know, there have been times I've seen players uh, not even run up and down the court at full speed when they know that I'm at the game, and, and that really makes me wonder what are they going to do when I'm not around in the summer? And what kind of workout habits do they have? So intangibles are a big key in terms of our success. Also, record your running times for the various drills we'll show you in the second half skills part of this tape. It helps give you a better profile of your progress because you'll only get better as you get stronger. Finally, you'll notice section markers at the lower right-hand portion of your screen from this video. These are displayed with each section of the basic ball handling skills. Each time you need to re-watch a section on the fundamental skills, just fast forward the tape to that corresponding number. Before we start today, I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about work ethic. Okay, to me, that's the most important thing about practice. The only way you're going to get better is practice, but the only way that you should practice is 100% all the time. What I want you guys to know is that to me, it doesn't matter how skilled you are in basketball. To me, it's how hard you work, because when you're out on the court playing against somebody, a lot of times, even if they're better than you, if you outwork them, you can beat them or you can be more successful and your team can be more successful than they are. So today when we're working, I want you to go at 100%. I want you to work each other hard. And I want you to remember that the only way that you're going to get better is if you're giving it your all every time we do a drill. Okay, whether the coach is watching you or you're in your backyard practicing by yourself, you should always remember that work ethic should be, you know, at the top level because that's the only way that you're going to become a better basketball player. Basketball has been a great part of my life. I think I've had a lot of success and a lot of fun because of the hard work and dedication I've put in ever since I started playing. I strongly believe that a key to basketball is strong fundamentals in ball handling. Whether you're a guard or you're a post player, the more comfortable you are handling this ball, the more comfortable you'll be learning not only the ball handling part of the game, but the shooting, rebounding, and passing part of the game as well. So here's a breakdown of some of the drills that I've started doing ever since I was younger to make myself more comfortable handling the basketball. The first drill is the suicide. Remember to start at the baseline and then you touch the foul line, go back to the baseline, touch the half court line, back to the baseline, the other foul line, back to the baseline, and then the other baseline and sprint back to this baseline. The more you do it, the faster you should get. And this is a great way not only to warm up, but to get yourself in, in game shape. The next warm up drill is a sideline drill. You start on one sideline of the basketball court and you sprint from one sideline, touching the other sideline and back as many times you can do in one minute. And again, the better shape you're in and the better you get, 
the more times you'll be able to touch each sideline as the minute goes by. And the last defensive sliding drill. You sprint to the foul line and then slide up to the half court line. Slide backwards to the foul line. Slide to the sideline, all the way across to the other sideline, back to the foul line, and then back pedal to the baseline. To recap, remember it's important to always stretch and warm up before your workout session. The first drill was the suicide drill and involves running all the lines on the court to condition you. Next was running from sideline to sideline as many times as you can in one minute. And finally was the sideline defensive drill, sliding from the baseline to the foul line, then to the sidelines in turn, and finally to the center court line and back to the baseline. What are the qualities that I'm describing in a player that I would like to ha have a player possess if I were describing the perfect player? And, that w and those things would be the things that Jennifer has, the, the tremendous focus and the tremendous uh, uh, dedication to what she's doing, the desire to, to be the best in everything that she does, uh, the explosive uh, personality that she has on the floor where she seems to take over a game uh, just at the time when it needs to be taken over. The next ball handling segment, I need my business partner. Okay, we start with the fingertip taps. Do them for about 30 seconds, just to get your fingers and hands warmed up. Next is the around the head drill. You want to go right to left for 10 repetitions and then left to right for 10 repetitions. And remember, the key is to increase your speed as you become more comfortable. That's how you're going to become a better ball handler. Next is the around the waist. Same thing, 10 times right to left, and then switch it, always going in both directions, as fast as you can. Then we move down to our knees, 10 circles right to left, 10 circles left to right. Our combination drill, which is also called the mummy, you start around the head, continue around the waist, around your knees, switch directions. So you want to go about 10 times down your body and 10 times up your body as quickly as you can. When we move down to the single leg, you want to do the same thing. Ten repetitions in each direction around your right leg. And then move to your left leg, ten repetitions in each direction. Switch directions, not legs. You always want to be able to, be able to go in both directions. Okay, let's go around the left knee. Good, go around the right. As we move to the figure eights, we can count 10 repetitions again. This is one, two, three. Okay. 
And then we move to the figure eights around the back. 10 times. Quickly, as quickly as you can. Okay? You'll get better at, at this when your hands get stronger and your handle gets better. You'll be able to do it a little bit quicker. Because that ball will flow from one hand to the other naturally. Okay, next we move to the step back figure eights. Let me show you one repetition. Around bolt, step back, around bolt, step back. That counts as one, so do 10 repetitions of those. These series of ball handling drills may take you a few minutes, but it could take you up to 15 minutes. Just try to improve your time every day. Start with the fingertip drill. Then, over the head, around the waist, and around the ankles. Next, combine these into the mummy drill and go as fast as you can without sacrificing style. Then, around the legs. Next, work on the figure eight drill. Then, over the back. And finally, the step forward drill. Do the hand coordination drills as precisely as you can and as often as you can. That's the only way you'll improve your skills quickly. And Jennifer's biggest strength is her tremendous determination and her tremendous drive and desire to, to be the best. And now for the fun part. Let's start our dribbling segment by pounding the ball hard against the floor with our right hand first, our head up for about 30 seconds. And then you want to switch over for about 30 seconds, pounding that ball hard against the floor with our left hand. After about a minute, you want to go right into crossovers, keeping your head up, crossing the ball from right hand to left hand, keeping that dribble low, working on feeling the ball with both hands. When we continue that crossover with our back and forth one-handed crossovers, you want to start getting the hang of it, hand going from side to side. And then as you become more comfortable, you want to get lower and quicker and also as wide and big as you can. Keeping that head up. You want to do it for about 30 seconds to a minute and then switch over to that left hand. Same thing. Get it low and then out wide. Hand going from side to side on the ball. Back and forth. Okay, now try to get a little lower. Okay, out farther, a little higher. Don't stand up, just make the ball go out farther. After the one-handed crossovers in front, you want to go back and forth. Starting out low, getting out wider, back and forth wider. Again, about 30 seconds to a minute. Work on keeping your head up and keeping in control of that ball. And then switch right back over to your right hand. Hand in front of the ball and then behind the ball. Front, behind. And then try to get wider, changing your speed, get really low. Next, we're going to circle our legs with the dribble. When you start, you might take more dribbles. You want to circle your leg about five to 10 times. And as you become more comfortable, you're going to be, use less dribbles, cut down on those dribbles, and increase the speed without looking at the ball. And then you move over to the left leg. Same thing. You may start out with more dribbles. But as you get better, cut down on those dribbles and quicken up the pace about five to 10 times around the leg. If you need to look at it to start, that's fine, but then try to keep your head up and look up at me. That's how you become better. Okay, let's go to our left leg. And then you can move right into the figure eights. Around both legs, more dribbles if you need it. 
and then become more comfortable with less dribbles. You can actually cut it down to one dribble on each side, one dribble in the middle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And do about 10 of these as well. Flick it forward, keep that yeah, opposite hand. Flick it to the opposite hand. Try to stay low and not move your legs. Just move the ball with your hands. These drills have really worked for me. I still try to do them about 10 to 15 minutes a day. And remember, a little extra work isn't going to hurt you. If you want to do 20, 50 repetitions of each, that's fine. Because the better ball handler you become, the better basketball player you'll become. The next segment is a great way to incorporate the individual drills we just learned into full court moves. Remember in the dribbling drills, we did the crossover dribble. Now we're going to take this and use it in a full court drill. We're going to cross over as quickly as we can, back and forth, but maintaining control at all times. Go. Cross over. And remember, you want to do this at least two times up and back. And although we're in a gym now, you don't always have to do it in a gymnasium. Just go on out into your driveway and practice these drills up and down the driveway. Next, we're going to do the inside out move. That's why we practiced this drill before, the one-handed back and forth inside out crossover. Now we're going to incorporate it into a full court drill. Both hands, you want to go up using your right hand and then back using your left hand. I demonstrated that slowly for you with my right hand, but remember when you're going up and back you want to do it with your left hand and your right hand as well and do it as quickly as you can with your head up and staying in control. This is another great move to get you away from a defender. It's called the around the back move and as you remember before we broke it down and I stress the importance of bouncing the ball around your back and in front of your opposite foot. So you start on this side bring the ball around and have it land in front of your opposite foot. So in this case, it would be in front of your left foot. Bring it around your body. Change directions. Good. That's it. Bring it around. I demonstrated that for you in slow motion, but remember to try to go full speed and go up and down at least twice. Becoming a good ball handler will also enable you to pick up some other full court moves, such as the spin dribble. Now remember, the spin dribble is just a reverse pivot, and this is what it looks like in slow motion. If you're going to the right, you're just going to plant your left foot and reverse pivot with your right foot so that you can continue on in the other direction. I'll back up and show you a few in slow motion, but remember when you're doing it, you want to start from one baseline and go up and back at least two times as quickly as you can go.
Bring it around. Another great full court move that can really fake out a defender is called the stutter step or the hesitation dribble. The purpose of this move is to dribble straight at a defender and then kind of hesitate so that the defender will stand up and then you can accelerate right by him. Stutter your feet. That's it. Left hand. Keep your head up. Don't look at the ball. Don't look at the ball. Head up. Now think back to the figure eight dribbling drill. The reason we did that was to get used to dribbling the ball between your legs because that's another full court move that you can use to push the ball off the floor and change directions to lose your defender. Dribbling is Jennifer Rosati's specialty, and it can become yours, but only if you practice all of these moves daily. Take these drills in order, and you'll increase your level of skill dramatically as you practice them. First, the straight dribble, both front and side, then through the legs. Next, the stutter step dribble, then the fake crossover, around the back, and finally, the spin pivot dribble. A lot of times when kids practice, all they practice is shooting. Now remember, shooting is very, very important part of the game, but it's only a part. Teamwork, defense, and working the ball around on offense come first, and then shootings after that. With the right fundamentals and a lot of hard work and practice, anyone can become a great shooter. I just want to start quickly by going over the fundamentals of a good shot. Okay, we're going to start with our feet. We want to be balanced, our knees are going to be a little bit bent, and our feet are going to be about shoulder width apart. Okay, we always want to be balanced when we're shooting. Whenever we're off balance, that causes the ball to go either left or right, or too far or not far enough. So we always want to be balanced. Our knees are bent, okay? And now we're going to move into our upper body. To start with the shooting hand, these are for right-handed shooters. Okay, we're going to have our elbow is going to be at a 90 degree at all times. The ball is going to be in the finger pads of your hand. That's this part right here. You're going to have a little window right here when you're holding the ball. Okay, but see how my, my elbow is at 90 degrees, and my elbow is also right in front of my shoulder. Okay, we don't want, we don't want to have shooters with your elbow out here or too far in. It's going to be right in front. So I can easily hold that ball with one hand, no problem, right in front of me. Okay, your left hand or your weak hand is your guide hand. Okay, There's, we don't want to get into the habit of shooting with two hands, so we want to start practicing with one hand and getting that balance. Add that guide hand, but when we shoot the ball, it's going to be only one-handed, okay? And most importantly, we want to follow through, okay? After we have that set up and we shoot that ball, your elbow should be above your eyes, and your follow-through should be to the floor, okay? So remember, it's not just your hand or your legs. It's both together. You want to get a good base so that you can use your legs in your shot. You're going to have your hand underneath the ball. Guide hand, shot, and follow through. And notice the backspin I have on that ball. Okay, that's what you want to see when you shoot the ball. Okay, the first drill we're going to do is not even with the basket. Okay, we're going to line up with a partner across, across the key, and we're going to get in our correct shooting form. Okay, so let's have those legs spread apart. Good, knees bent, and you're balanced, right? You're not going to fall over on me? Good. All right, and we're going to take the ball with one hand, and your other hand's going to, are you right-handed? 
Okay, the other hand's gonna be down behind your back, okay? And we wanna practice being able to hold the ball, okay, with one hand. All right, good, she's got her elbow at 90 degrees, she's got the ball on her finger pads, and she's got a little window right here. Her knees are bent, she's got in great shooting form. Okay, now what we're gonna do is practice with one hand shooting the ball, following through across the key to your partner, okay? All right, that's all right, pass the ball back. We want to make sure we grip that ball, we want to use our legs, right, and go up and shoot it right across to our partner. Go ahead. There you go. Now you want to get arc on the ball as if there was a basket up there. Okay, try it one more time. There you go. That's better. She's got a nice little backspin on the ball. Okay, now this is the drill we're going to do. I want each of you, you want you two to pass it back and forth to each other with one hand. Practice shooting as if there was a 10-foot basket. Use those legs and follow through. Good, go ahead. That's it. Good, bend those knees. Correct shooting form, can get that ball nice and high in the air. Good arc. Good, that was very good. That's it. Okay, hold on for a second. This is good, go ahead, I want you guys to watch her. She's got a nice, good arc on the ball as if it were a 10 foot basket. And you see how the ball's spinning backwards like that? That's the right kind of backspin that you want on the ball to have a good shot. Good, now you just need to get a little bit higher. Go ahead. That's it. All right, okay, hold on for a second. Hold the balls. Now we're going to add our guide hand. Okay, we're going to have the same principles. Don't change your shot at all. We're going to add our left or our right hand to the ball just to hold it in place. And we're going to use the same shot. Notice how my left hand didn't even move at all. It was just there to hold the ball to help it out a little bit, but when I shot the ball, it just stayed in the same place. Okay, so let's use the same principles and shoot the ball to our partners. Good. Good. That's it. Now just get a little bit higher. Use those legs. That's it. After we get the fundamentals down, now you want to apply it to a real basket. If you're younger and not as strong, you might want to start in a little bit closer until you get comfortable. We want to remember to shoot with only one hand, keep our knees bent, and you want to aim to get that ball over the top of the rim and never be short. Okay, she's going to demonstrate for us a, a shot after she's been practicing diligently all morning. Good job. When you come out to shoot, you may have great form but you have to work hard to become a great shooter. When you're by yourself, the best way to come out and shoot is to warm yourself up with a couple close shots, making sure that you have the right form. And then once you're ready, you should get into a workout program, starting with shots that are maybe close in, and then working your way out to the three-point line or to what your range is. But remember, hustle and desire is what's gonna make you a better player. So when you shoot the ball, you should be hustling after your rebound and running to the next shot. Okay, rebounding is a lot like defense. You kind of want to have the same position. When you go to box somebody out, you want to have your knees bent, your butt down low, and your hands up in the air so that you can catch every ball. You don't want to get caught trying to hold that girl behind you. You always want to have your hands up. And doesn't it look like I'm in a defensive stance right now? Well, that's what you want to look like when you go to rebound the ball. But it's very important not to get caught underneath the basket like this because not very many shots are going to come off right there. When you box out, you want to push that girl way out as far as you can push her so that when that rebound comes off, you have all this space to get that rebound. Okay, make sure you know where she is. I want you guys to go in hard for that rebound, okay? I want you to try to get that rebound and make her box you out. Go ahead. Okay, make sure you know where she is one more time. I want to see you get, get your butt right into her and push her out. Okay, step right at her and then pivot. Go ahead. That's better, that's better. You went after that ball. She might have snuck around you a little bit, but you went after her and got that ball. Okay, this last drill we're gonna do is gonna work on pivoting. When you get that rebound, 
in the key, you want to be able to pivot to the outside and make a nice outlet pass to your point guard or guard so they can bring the ball up the floor. Okay, so you're going to have one person on defense, one person on offense, and then one person out by that yellow line right about there for the outlet. Okay, so that's, that's your teammate, and when you get that rebound, you want to give it to her. So this is what it's going to look like. You start just for a second and throw it off the glass, and I'm going to demonstrate, okay? And you're going to be coming in for that rebound. When she cuts in, I'm going to box her out. Go ahead, throw it off. Box out, rebound. So I have these, my elbows out so nobody can take it from me. Pivot to the outside, pass. Okay, so I want to make a nice hard outlet pass that the defense can't get their hand on. So you're going to have your elbows out so no one can take that pass from you. Pivot outside and pass. Okay, make a nice hard pass. You ready? And you call for the outlet pass, okay? So she knows where you are. Go ahead. There you go. Okay, catch that ball, and then wherever foot's on your outside, it's going to be your right foot on this side. You're just going to pivot and pass. That was a good box out. Make sure your hands are up. Ready? One more time. Go ahead. There you go. That was a great job, and that's a good job. You know, it's always good when she knows where her teammates are, so when you call outlet, it helps her know that she can just turn it outside, pass to you, and you can dribble it right down the floor. Shooting is absolutely vital to your offensive game, but remember that the basics of shooting and rebounding are even more important. They're part of the offensive game, and it depends on how well you execute them and the basic maneuvers. For shooting, remember, head up, your arm at a 90 degree angle to the basket, shooting hand over your head, and follow through. When you're rebounding, remember that you must always put yourself between your opponent and the basket back into the opponent, pushing them out of the rebounding zone. Get the rebound and pass it out to your teammate. When you become more comfortable with these drills, it really only takes about 15 or 20 minutes a day. I became a good basketball player by doing these drills every day, and I still do these drills. Even though it doesn't take me a lot of time, I feel that practice will make you perfect. Just like most things in life, hard work is going to bring a lot of great rewards. So work hard, dedicate yourself, and remember to always have fun. No matter who I'm playing against, whether they're more talented than me, whether they're taller than me, faster, stronger, under no circumstances will I ever step onto a court and let myself be outworked by somebody. And I think in almost 100% of the cases, that's always proved to be like the winning edge. And um, I think that that's you know, what everybody's philosophy should be, is that you, know, you may not be as, as good as the next guy, but if you practice harder than them and you're there that extra hour after they're there and you're shooting 50 shots more than they are and you're working that much harder, then you know, when you step onto the court with your team, then you know, there's no reason that you shouldn't win. And I think Jen was one of those few players that when given that challenge, she spent her time over the summer and you could see a difference when she came back. But yeah, she did go out and, and work on her three-point shot and she did go out and work on her left hand and she did go out and work shooting on, on shooting off the dribble. So she took it very seriously. Not everybody does that. From the first time we ever stepped on the court preseason my freshman year, um, you know, she was the toughest one on the court. She was the hardest worker. She's emotionally driven, but I don't think people see the, the real emotional side of Jennifer. Uh, they do see it on the court, you know, in one aspect, but I don't see, think that they see the, the sensitive, um, emotional, uh, caring side as far as um, in her relationship with people individually, her friends, her family. Uh, we work very hard with our children, and we, we have four wonderful children, and it takes a lot of work. And you throw the sports aside, you got to work with these kids. You got to be there for them. Setting your goals to win a national championship, that's great. But she didn't win the national championship every year. She won it once, though. The other time, she came up short. That didn't make her any less of a player. The, the, the idea is not, what am I going to get at the end if I do this? The idea is, let me see how far I can go with what I have. The unique thing about Jennifer Rosati is not just her skill at basketball. It's her dedication to life. She has shown you the fundamentals of her game that can make you a better player as well. We hope you'll learn and grow from these fundamentals you've been given. 
But more importantly, we hope you learn that you can be whatever you choose to be if you want it enough. Because practice not only makes you perfect on the court, the commitment behind that practice is what can give you perfection in life. You know, it's not just the games and all the glory that comes with if playing in front of 8,000 people, but it's the hours behind the scenes that you put in to become that, that player that's out there. I